Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Lincolnshire series, a district of 56 parishes in the north of Lincolnshire. Let's see which one we're visiting today. So today in North Lincolnshire, I've got a place for you that's small enough to be a village, but large enough to be classed as its own post town. I'll explain what that means as we go around, but for now, all you need to know is its name is Ulsby. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Ulsby is a rural village situated 10 miles northwest of Grimsby and 14 miles east of Scunthorpe. It's surrounded by the nearby villages of Haybra, Wootton and Croxton. It's sometimes referred to as Ulsby by Barton, so as not to confuse it with another village with the same name, also in Lincolnshire, which can be found in East Lindsay. The name Ulsby is from Old Scandinavian and it means the farmstead of a man called Ulfa. If that sounds familiar to the seasoned viewer, it's also how Ulleskelf in Selby got its name. It appears in the 1086 Doomsday Book as Ulversby. Whatever you want to call it, this place can be accessed by both bus and train. The bus services you'll need out here are the 250 and the 455. This episode was filmed just after the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, so some of the bunting and associated celebratory items were still visible in places like this excellent yarn bombing. Ulsby is the largest village in what is largely a rural slice of North Lincolnshire, and that means it has quite a unique status when it comes to its postcode. Here's some more basic information first. Ulsby is its own post town. I've been meaning to make a video about these but never had a chance before. Here I can explain it a little. The UK is divided into 124 postal areas and Ulsby falls within DN. DN is of course short for Doncaster but it would be wrong to say that it has a Doncaster postcode. Postal areas are split into districts. For Ulsby, that postal district is DN39. Postal districts are assigned a post town. This is what you write on your address after your street address and before your postcode. For anywhere in DN39, you would write Ulsby. This property shown here would be written as I have on the screen now. The DN39 area covers places like Croxton, Thornton Curtis and Kermington, so these are said to have an Ulsby postcode. I will go into more detail about that in a special video, but for now, let's keep going. Here we have a former Wesleyan Methodist Chapel, which closed in 2011. Across the road is a water pump, which is almost hidden in plain sight. It's one of those things that if you see it, great, but if not, nobody can really blame you. This is on Brocklesby Road. So if, like me, you just walk down Coronation Road, you come to this junction here. You can see I'm quite confident of standing in the middle of the road here because even though this is a, a bigger village than the last two you've seen here in North Lincolnshire, it's still fairly quiet. If you were to go along this road, Brocklesby Road, it would take you into West Lindsay. We're not going down there because there's a, a couple of houses, but nothing much more than that. We're going this way along Front Street to catch what's down here. There's uh, quite a bit down here. 
So this is Front Street, which will take us past some of the village's amenities before ending up at Yarbrough Court, a small collection of business units at the other end. Ulsby seems to be growing in places. There's some new houses being constructed off Front Street here, and further around the route, there's some to see that have already been built. Along here we have the one and only public house, the Fox Inn. There is another pub which Ulsby locals will be screaming at the screen about now I've said that, and that would be the Yarbrough Arms, which is located one mile from the centre of the village. I'll explain why that's not an Ulsby pub later. For many centuries, the Hastings family were seated in Ulsby, and they were the lords of the manor and principal landowners. By 1872, the Earl of Yarborough had taken over. By 1913, things hadn't changed much, and the connection to the Earl of Yarborough is upheld thanks to Yarborough Court. Here, you're looking at Layla Boutique and hair razors, but there's plenty more about this collection of business units. So there's more than just hair razors and Layla Boutique here as well in Yarbrough Court. There's seven businesses. We've got hair razors, Global Tourism Solutions, Leap Ahead Nursery, that's two units. So it's actually only six businesses then. Swanbeck Veterinary Centre, Tea at Six Tea Rooms and the Ivory Gown. This is the kind of place that I kind of wish Nikki was with me with for because the tea rooms would certainly be right up her street. Next we carry on through Hallcroft because we're able to walk down a public footpath towards the school and the church next. At the end of Hallcroft there's a link between it and School Mews. This is the new area of housing I was referring to back on Front Street. Google Street View still shows this area as being barren waste ground, but it's anything but that these days. I imagine these will have bumped up the average house price. Around the corner we find the school to which the street name refers. This is St Nicholas C of E Primary School and Ulsby also has a preschool. Almost directly opposite the school is the Anglican Parish Church dedicated to St Nicholas. Parts of the building date back to the 13th century and this is another one with a very tall spire. Just to the south of the main door there's a medieval cross shaft. This is approximately 1.4 metres high overall, and there's a sundial on top with the inscription Rich Folding. So this is the third church I've seen so far this morning in this little run. I was hoping this one was open, but it's not. Even the outside door's locked, which is uh, something you don't see very often. Normally the, the outside door is open and the inside door is locked, but for some reason here, both of them are. So uh, yeah, I can't get into this one. But what an awesome church this is. And how about that for another tall spire. Restorations to the church were recorded in 1852, 1879 and 1887. In Ulsby Skitter, a hamlet to the east, a mission church was built to this in the late 1800s. Again there's a modest churchyard. There's a war grave in here, that of Private Benjamin Heseltine Few of the North Staffordshire Regiment. From the churchyard there's a footpath which connects us to the main road again, so I duly obliged. Thankfully this one's nowhere near as hard to walk on as that one in Melton Ross was. The main road through Ulsby is one we've met previously in various places in North Lincolnshire. This is the A1077 and Ulsby is its last stop before it hits the A160 at South Killingholm. And there's a nice message reminding anyone coming from the west to drive carefully through the village, which is something that should really go without saying. Now I'm no expert, but they look very earthwork-like to me. Do they to you? In this field? I was absolutely spot on with my assertion here. These are the remains of a medieval moat in a meadow at the western end of the village. The undulations gave it away. This though I had to dig a bit deeper for. This is marked on the map as the feather workshop. As far as I can tell, it is, or maybe was now looking at it, a furniture shop. Opposite this is Ulsby's co-op store, which doubles as the village post office. This is on the site of the Brocklesby Ox, a former village pub. It's sited on the corner of Church Lane, which I nipped back onto again at this point because I'd spotted a parish notice board and I hadn't yet passed one. There's a larger one at the village hall. The vicarage is located down here too. I found a gorgeous old picture of it from an undated postcard and that'll come your way later 
in the picture bit. This is what the church looks like from the other side. You can see why the village sign shows it. This I thought was quite the picturesque shot. So opposite the co-op here there's a bench which I've just taken a seat on for a few moments. This is the happy bench. Sit here if you don't mind someone stopping by and saying hi. Let's spread some love people. Nobody needs to feel lonely. That's nice isn't it? This is the kind of thing that you tend to find in school playgrounds but uh, it's nice to see one in public. The village has a couple of food outlets. You're looking at the local Chinese takeaway here. There's also an Indian restaurant a little further along the high street. Next we have Ulspice's former primitive Methodist chapel which was built in 1889. Rather unusually Ulspy also has a Seventh Day Adventist church as well built in 1888. See the picture bit as well for that. Here's the village war memorial. The largest slice of wartime history this place has is a Lancaster bomber crash which happened over the village in 1943. There's a plaque here to commemorate that. Also on the war theme, Vivian Holloday is one of Ulspie's most famous sons. He received the George Cross for bravery after saving a fellow airman from a burning plane in 1940. Now we go up Abbey Road and don't worry there's no pedestrian crossings on this one. The chapel we've just seen on the high street was built to replace a smaller building on Abbey Road. That would close for worship in 1943 and it was sold in 1950. The Abbey in the name of the road would appear to be a reference to Thornton Abbey as if you follow it that's where you'll get to. Now originally my route wasn't going to come up Abbey Road but I changed my mind because I thought that gate there looked like an access path onto the playing field which is round the back of the village hall. It's not because it's locked. However, I did hear somebody talking about a pond up here earlier. So if there's a pond you would have thought there would be some kind of access path to that and then down onto the playing field because it's literally just behind it. I had a look on the map to see where it was. Let's see if we can spot it. If not I've got to walk back down Abbey Road and walk along the main road again. I walked as far as Priory Crescent to see if there was an access point to the playing field from here but my luck wasn't in. Still you got to see some more of the village. Of course with this not being far from Humberside Airport once again the helicopters were up. I was told the main one that flies overhead here is the local Coast Guard as the sea isn't that far away. After walking back we're now on the playing field behind the village hall. The field has recently had extensive improvements to drain and level it and football is now played on it regularly. The pond to which I was referring is here at the back of the playing field. It would appear you can only access this from this side so walking back seemed the right thing to do. Alongside the village hall which by the way is managed by the Ulsby Village Association, a registered charity, is this pretty cool looking playground. The building itself has undergone refurbishment. The work was funded by a grant from the National Lottery. A recent extension has provided changing rooms for the sports teams to use. That was supposed to be where the main walk stopped but I couldn't help notice this property on the high street. Was this formerly a pub? It looked way too big to be a house. Right the rest of the route is just a straight walk back to where the cars parked and it looks all residential or mostly residential so that's a perfect time to give you today's picture bit.
Right, I'm back where the car is parked on this housing estate here. If you haven't seen this area yet, there we go. It's basically just more of the same as what you can see in shot now, really, around here. Anyway, I've got one more thing to cover, but it's not within the parish boundaries, which makes no sense at all. It's a railway station. It's Ulspies railway station. It's actually over the parish boundary. Why that is, I have no idea. Let's go and check it out. Ulspey Railway Station serves the village despite not being in the parish boundaries. It falls just over the border into South Killingholm and it was built in 1848. Here next to the level crossing is the Yarborough Arms. This is also over the border into South Killingholm, so technically it's not in Ulspey. The locals though will tell you it's theirs. The line is one we've seen before. The next station along it to the north is Thornton Abbey. You'll recall that from the Thornton Curtis episode. The station layout is somewhat unusual in that all passenger trains use a single platform, even though the station is located on a double track line. There are junctions at either end of the station. That's because the branch line from Habra to Barton on Humber meets and then diverges from the freight only line from Brocklesby to Immingham Dock. You might have heard in the background, by the way, that the barriers came down. It's a freight train. Get ready to count how many wagons are on it. The barriers stayed down and a second train, which looked almost identical to the first, came past from the other direction. In fact, they looked so alike I had to check the map to see if there was a turning circle or something to the north, which there isn't, so that was just pure coincidence. So whilst the station is not within Ulsby Parish, this area is. This is Ulsby Skitter, just basically one road which runs north from where the station is. This is within the boundaries, but the station, which is literally just behind that hedge, is not. The boundary is somewhere there. I think the boundary is actually marked by a little um, watercourse a beck of some description i can't remember what the name of it is offhand anyway this uh, this area is where i found an actual parish notice board we have the church notice board earlier but here there is an actual parish notice board which means i can put one of these on it there you go done all spear officially done and we're well over halfway now here in North Lincolnshire. It doesn't seem five minutes since I started this district and we're getting towards the end of it, which is scary, quite frankly. But uh, yeah, I suppose when you know it as well as I do, you can just plow through it. You know where to go and you know what to look for. It's the way it is. Time for me to move on to my next one, which is much smaller than this. It begins with a W. That'll give you a clue. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Olsby. And I'm out.